Do you think you're good at knowing what other people are thinking? A lot of people do, but the reality is most people are terrible at knowing what others are thinking. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how mind reading can contribute to depression and anxiety and what you can do about it. Hi everybody. In today's video, we're going to be continuing our series on cognitive distortions, which are faulty ways of thinking, kind of like mental shorthand gone wrong. And these cognitive distortions can make us feel more anxious or depressed. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a very common cognitive distortion called mind reading. But before I get into that, just a couple of disclaimers to go over. I'm a registered psychologist in the province of British Columbia, Canada, and this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute or replacement for advice from your doctor or mental health professional. Now with those things out of the way, let's start talking about mind reading. So a uh, question I often ask people is, is how well do you feel you are at knowing what someone else is thinking? Um, I had a, a friend uh, that I used to go hiking with a lot, and we would spend a lot of time on our hikes talking about uh, people and uh, other people and people that my friend was interested in. And there was this one time that he was talking about this, uh, this woman that he was interested in and that he was falling in love with. And he, uh, he kept going through all sorts of examples of nonverbal behavior that she was engaging in that led him to think that she was really, inter really interested in him or, uh, all the different ways that he was interpreting uh, how she was responding to him as signs that she was really into him. So uh, it'd be like uh, something like she would be talking about another guy that she might be interested in and he had interpreted it as, oh, well, yeah, she's not really interested in him. She's just floating it, uh, floating out a trial balloon to see how I respond to get a sense of whether or not I'm interested in her. Uh, I tried to point out to my friend, well, maybe she's just actually interested in this guy, but my friend, he wasn't, he wasn't buying any of it. Uh, this friend also tends to think that people are always sort of looking at him and checking him out and thinking that he's, uh, he's really attractive and they're really into him. Um, not surprisingly, you're probably guessing my friend is still single and, uh, and the woman was not actually uh, interested in dating him. But this gives an example, maybe a bit of an extreme example of mind reading, which is something that's extremely, com extremely common. Um, we do it all the time. Uh, but at its core, if you think about it, it, it represents almost, a, almost like a, a telepathic power that we think we have. And in depression, what can tend to happen is mind reading takes the form of us knowing what someone else is thinking or feeling, and it's usually always negative. So I know what that person's thinking. They're thinking something badly of me. The problem with mind reading is that the interpretations that are made are usually possible, but these interpretations are given much greater weight and much greater likelihood than other more likely possibilities. So for example, my friend, maybe the woman was floating out a trial balloon by talking about this other guy that she was interested in as a way of making him jealous, or the more likely possibility was that she was actually just more interested in the other guy. I mean, other examples of this is uh, a friend passes me on the street and doesn't say hello to me. I assume that the friend's ignoring me because they don't like me anymore. Uh, I'm eating alone in a cafeteria and I think everyone notices and thinks that I'm a loser because I'm eating alone or eating by myself. I get to work a, a little bit late and I think about how all of my coworkers and everyone must have noticed and is upset with me for being late. 
well, yeah, those are all possibilities, but what are more realistic likelihoods? Well, maybe my friend didn't even see me. Um, maybe the people in the cafeteria are more interested in finding a place to eat and not really noticing that I'm eating alone. Um, it's unlikely that anyone at work would notice or even care that I'm a couple of minutes late to work. Those are much more likely possibilities, but the mind reading puts such great emphasis on uh, the negative interpretations. And the thing with mind reading is that it can also lead us into thinking more negatively about other people. So thoughts like, well, he's just in that job for the money, or she disagreed with me and thinks that my opinions are stupid, or that person uh, is a bigot. I can tell by the way that he glared at me. So uh, I'm interpreting other people in a negative light based on how I think they're thinking. But, you know, maybe that person is in that business because he enjoys it. It's not just about the money. Maybe she disagreed with me because she respects my opinion and wants to have a, a debate and wants to discuss it further. Maybe that person glared at me not because they're a bigot, but because I took the parking spot that they wanted. See, one of the big problems with mind reading is that it makes us feel much more certain than we should be about our negative predictions in ambiguous situations. So there's these vague situations and I give myself much, a much greater sense of certainty as to what's going on based on how I'm interpreting what someone else is thinking. This can be a huge problem in close relationships, especially marriages. Um, in these types of situations, the thing is you get to know the other person so well the danger is you stop checking to ask what they're actually thinking. And you tend to rely more on your mind reading predictions of what they're thinking. So imagine that my wife is quiet one evening because she was criticized at work and she's still too upset to want to talk about it. But I engage in mind reading and I interpret that her silence means that she's angry with me. And I'm wondering like, what did I do wrong? Like I didn't do anything. Why is she so mad at me? And so what ends up happening is I do this more and more in my relationship is that I become less and less accurate in my guesses while at the same time becoming increasingly more convinced that I know how the other person feels, even though, uh, even though I'm totally convinced, even though it's completely inaccurate. And so uh, you can sometimes see this come up in marriage therapy when spouses are stunned and shocked to hear their spouse describe what they've been feeling or thinking because they had no idea. They've just assumed they knew what their spouse was thinking or feeling based on mind reading. So uh, if you notice yourself doing mind reading, what can you do about this? So if you engage in a lot of mind reading, what's the solution? Well, uh, for me and the, the advice that I tend to give my clients is the key to overcoming mind reading is to remember five words. Stay in your own head. Stay in your own head. Um, when, when people first start to learn cognitive therapy skills, uh, as I start to work with people and we start doing things like thought records, initially what they recognize is how challenging and difficult it can be to actually be aware of our own thinking patterns, right? We're not used to thinking about our thinking. And so when people first start doing cognitive therapy, they're surprised how difficult it is to actually tap into what it is that I'm thinking. So if it's hard enough for me to know what I'm thinking, even though 
They're my thoughts, even though they're in my own head and I have direct access to them. How much more impossible is it? How much more impossible would it be to know what someone else is thinking? This is the, this is the problem with mind reading. So when you recognize that you're engaging in mind reading, the key is to stop and to remind yourself to stay in your own head. If you want to know what the other person is thinking, ask them. Don't assume that you can interpret it based on, you know, their behavior or what they're saying. Um, you're probably engaging in mind reading. And if you're experiencing depression or anxiety, chances are that mind reading is incorrect. So uh, I hope that makes sense. I hope that gives a better sense of uh, what mind reading is and some of the problems that it can cause. I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas about this. So please leave me some comments in the comments section down below. If you're enjoying my videos and would like to see more, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and you'll be alerted every week when I post a new video. So that's all for today's video. As always, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.